playing one mana Ysail Druid again, and I'm going to be commenting over two games. First game is uh, one of the matches where you happen to have the correct pieces in hand, and it shows you how fast you can actually combo an opponent down. Uh, this is actually a mulligan hand. Um, I actually threw away a different hand, and it brought me back uh, Malagos and uh, Dollmaster. Uh, this is against Priest, which is typically slow match, but even against Aggro in this situation, I have swipe in hand, so I'd be able to deal with early game threats, just enough to uh, to pull this off. Typically, when I mulligan, I keep Oaken Summons and Biology Project. They're usually just the two cards that I keep. I think else I just throw away. Uh, in some circumstances, if I'm playing against a Warlock, or I'm playing against the Priest, or another Druid, I'll keep the Sata and something like uh, Avion, uh, Dollmaster, or Ysel in hand. Uh, it's a bit, it's greedy keep, but it's okay against like slower decks. Uh, but we get this on time, so we ideally want this to hit uh, Dollmaster. If it hits Dollmaster, you can outright kill them. Uh, if you have a UI in hand or even a Nourish in hand, just any card draw if you hit the right combo pieces. So it's Big Priest, we've not ramped, it's turn 4, this triggers off. It hits uh, the Malagos, tough luck, but here we can ramp into uh, two mana crystals and then play the uh, the Dollmaster, oh, sorry, I say Dollmaster, it's Geppetto. Play the Geppetto anyway on the turn after. Like I say, if you're playing against Aggro here, you wouldn't be able to do that ramp turn, but you'd clear them one turn with swipe and then you'd ramp up into it next turn. Pretty typical turn for Big Breeze, he just hits the Shadow Essence and Vargoth, he misses the 50-50, although I don't think it would have mattered in this match, he's not got anywhere near enough damage on board. Uh, typically, uh, with Dollmaster, there's there's multiple ways that you can kill your opponents. Um, this one is just like uh, the best, obviously. Av any Aviana, one mana, Aviana is fine. You could do it with one mana, um, Kun and Ysail. You can do it with a one mana you sail and a Malagos. There's, you know, there's there's a multiple combinations you can do. Uh, so this is basically a, a, like an under three minute match, uh, which which is pretty typical for this deck. Actually, it's uh, it's really quick. Uh, even on the slower cycles of this deck, um, it's mainly just defended until you get one of these like pieces where you draw into another piece. So yeah, it's Aviani sail ramp. Uh, not ram, sorry, UI, refresh, and then you just, it's highly likely that you draw all your uh, your uh, draw cards off in chain succession, because there's so many, there's two nourishes and two UIs, two paths, two howls, so it's very likely that you just draw anyway. So that's an example of like a typical, I'd say that's pretty typical for this deck. Uh, if you're playing against like a disruption deck, I'd, I'd classify Secret Mage as being pretty disruptive. If you're playing against Secret Mage, you just typically defend yourself until they run out of cards. The second match is the more interesting one out of the two. That was just an example of kind of a, an average reduction from the Sata. Uh, this match is Big Shaman. Uh, even Shaman seems to have disappeared. And it's been replaced by either Quest Shaman or this Big Shaman, which is uh, perfectly fine. I think Big Shaman's... I don't know, probably on the same power level as Big Priest. Uh, probably a bit more powerful early game, but late game Big Priest probably takes over uh, with continued pressure. Same again, I, I basically keep, uh, or I would keep Biology Project and I would keep a uh, Oaken Summons just so I can pull the Vargoth out, ideally, and then the Sata. Um, I always play it on curve, even if I haven't got a minion in hand, because I have so much card draw, I'll probably top deck into a minion or try like rush draw into one basically and the early game with big shaman is usually hero power uh serpent portal i think it's called on turn three and then hero power again and then on turn five they'll play some of their uh the big stuff so yeah the sata pulls currently it's only hitting malagos which uh against aggro sata hitting malagos is, is actually really good because you can play malagos and a swipe to remove an aggro and an, an entire board from aggro, uh, so usually that's okay against a deck like this. Malagos, you want to uh, actually just wipe out your opponent immediately, so it's not that great that it's hit Malagos. So what I decide to do here is uh, try draw as many cards as uh, as possible. So I've got a couple of options. You can ramp, you can nourish for ramp, 
using the uh, uh, Innovate, or you can Nourish for cards and look for an additional uh, minion that's worth reducing. Uh, in this case, because we're on a bit of a timer, I decided to actually draw three to see if we can uh, rip a, uh, another combo piece out. Uh, we don't. We just keep the Malagos there. But what we do get is um, uh, some more armor and some more burn. Now, the reason this match is interesting is because our opponent actually rips Malagos out of the deck. Or out of the hand, I should say. Uh, I don't have enough damage here to actually uh, to kill him. But we are going to obviously swipe. And we're going to do as much spell damage as we can now whilst he's on board. Because he's not going to live for another turn. He'll probably hex or devolve it. Because that's what he has to do, essentially. So uh, I just choose to do the uh, the swipe, which clears off the lifesteal. And the double uh, the double roots, just because that pushes as much damage as possible. I have a UI in hand, and I have a swipe in hand. So I've got the damage there, and I need to do it quick before he pulls out another uh, another walking fountain. So the Malagos, I, either, I assume it's going to get text or devolved. Uh, I think it's devolve, and it's... Uh, two poorly started minions i think it's togwaggle funnily enough but what i'm planning on on doing next turn is uh yeah it was togwaggle look at that okay yeah what i was planning on doing uh this turn was um I, I definitely wanted to swipe but i also wanted to ramp so what i uh what i decided to do after a bit of thinking so you can't nourish swipe not enough mana you need eight mana for that um nourish would give me a UI setup, um, but then it still be three turns in order to actually kill him with swipe and nourish. So I actually go for uh, what I think it would be the the most efficient play, which is to draw two off paths, look for a biology project. If I draw a biology project, I can then ramp for the next turn for UI and swipe on this turn because it'll give me nine mana total. Um, so after a bit of debate, uh, you know, that's probably the best. That's the best way to win because he's very likely to pull a uh, a walking fountain out. Uh, I don't get it, which makes this turn um, ultimately uh, it, it puts me on the on the path of a loss essentially. Because now, I mean, next turn I can still nourish and swipe. That is that's still possible. So it's the same amount of turns, but realistically, I would have needed to really swipe there and ramp at the same time. Because as soon as he pulls out Walking Fountain, that's going to be uh, eight, 8 heal. Or if it's only a 4 4 Walking Fountain, it's it's four, you know it's 4 healing. But, uh, here he just Wind Fury's his own 7 7. So it's 21 damage. So I can tank out one of those uh, next hits if I want to. Uh, so the play could be. So now I'm in a tricky situation because uh, Vargoth's left in the deck. So I would draw Vargoth, gain 12. Uh, or I can go for lethal with the swipe here, which I decide to do. Because I've pretty much got to swipe, I think, here. Because uh, I'm going to die otherwise. So I get the 6, six HP from the, uh, from the Oaken Summon, which should be enough to live past those two taunts. Uh, I actually decide to trade in 7-1. Because if it does hit swipe, uh, that would die guaranteed, and I wouldn't get the wind fury hit on me. Uh, and we didn't hit. Well, unfortunately, we didn't hit the uh, the face. We had to hit the face there. Now our opponent picks up the walking fountain, and I only have two burn spells left, and it's UI and UI uh, with no. Uh, so my only out here, because I only have ten mana, eh, nine mana. I only have nine mana. So I can't play Aviana and Kun. It's impossible. I can play Kun. Uh, so there's two outs. I can get Aviana Kun, which would allow me to Kun, then Aviana, then Melon into Ysel, and then go for a double UI look, and I can use Nourish for Ramp, or I can get Kun and Ysel, which is a more mana efficient way of doing it. Because uh, there's only uh, those three minions left in the deck, it's highly likely I would draw the Kun, so it's a refresh then the sale, and then we have to uh, look for the last UI. Eight cards left, so it's just it's just very likely that I, uh, well, I know it's guaranteed that I pull it, essentially, here. Yeah. Uh, I'm just trying to think, if the UI is the last card, I would 
Dice of Fatigue, it looks like. So I use the uh, Howl. It's not there. I have to use the Paths. Uh, I still have enough mana to do it because I have Ramp. And it is the last card. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, that is fine. Yeah, 20, 21 HP is enough to survive the Fatigue. Uh, but there you go. Even with Malagos pulled out, and we didn't find the biology projects when the, when we needed them to guarantee the lethal. You still got to play to the out. So that is a, a nice little example game there of that's a that's a game that doesn't go as quite as planned because of a bit of disruption. And that you can still win. Just just keep your keep the uh, keep in your head what your outs are. Enjoy. <laughs>